Hey everybody, Scott Spreitzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Tuesday, October 8, 2019. Got a free pick coming up in just a moment. It is our NFL recap for week five. We do these every Tuesday, so this video is going to be a little bit longer than the rest of the week. We'll get to all that in just a moment along with the free pick. First, a quick note, if you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, it's a real cool way to give it a trial run. You click on the link below the video and you get yourself set up for a free $60 account and you know the deal. Uh, you can use that free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages at DocSports.com or anybody else on the roster. Also, it comes with a DocSports.com guarantee. Don't miss out. All you got to do is click on the link below this video to get started and uh, give it a great trial run with that free $60 account. Again, a free pick coming up in just a moment. What's going on on Tuesday? Well, uh, we've got WNBA 45 and 25 run with a couple of pushes of the WNBA. I've got an NHL uh, premier pick. We are five and one on the season and we're now 27 and 12 on an October, November run. We always talk about every year. We love the early portion of the NHL season quite a bit. 27 and 12 with the last 30 five and one this season so far on the ice and also uh, wanted to mention that our football plays will return this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern 3 p.m. Pacific time that'll be college football and the NFL and uh, we've begun to heat up we had a nice six unit winner by the way again this past weekend in college football those plays now a perfect six and oh on the season more on that on Thursday's video but again for Tuesday we've got uh, NHL and WNBA over at DocSports.com and uh, you'll be able to grab those at about 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific after that time with uh, the NHL. And as far as the WNBA is concerned, I'll be posting that around 1 p.m. Eastern time. And again, 45 and 25 run of the WNBA. Don't miss out. All right, uh, let's get to it. Uh, last night, you're on the free pick report. We did have the San Francisco 49ers. A nice win uh, there. And let's just start there with the recap when we talk about the NFL because last night's game on Monday night, you saw what San Francisco does that's a little bit different than most teams nowadays in the NFL. Man, they line up in an I formation on a bunch of plays. They have a fullback that they feature in both blocking schemes and every once in a great while receiving the ball out of the backfield but does a great job as a lead blocker. You've got tight end usage that's kind of old school like I formation stuff out of the Niners. And what it does also is it takes pressure off of Jimmy Garoppolo and he's going to have to get a little bit better uh, with his accuracy at times. He did miss a few play uh, passes last night that in a close game could have cost his team but overall really got to like what Shanahan has done with this team I love that old school look whether in I formation now moving forward uh, we're gonna have to get the news on Tuesday on their starting fullback who was injured last night he was clutching his knee uh, after one play in the second half last night we'll see uh, what the injury status is for him moving forward integral part of that offense and you saw what happens when he was injured and taken out of the game all of a sudden you had a lot more single setback type of looks out of the offense rather than their preferred duo back with the fullback leading the way out of that I formation. So something to keep an eye on as far as uh, the injury list and reports are for over the next couple of days with the San Francisco 49ers, but they just clocked Cleveland from start to finish. Uh, defense put a ton of pressure. We talked about them being one of the top DVOAs in all of the NFL. They showed why again last night as they put constant pressure on Baker Mayfield. Of course, you had uh, Nick Bosa just taking out some revenge, I guess you could call it personal revenge uh, for that loss. He, he and his Ohio State Buckeyes suffered at the hands of Baker Mayfield and the Oklahoma Sooners uh, a couple of years ago when Oklahoma came into Columbus and then Baker Mayfield with that fa famous, or I guess if we're in Ohio, infamous flag planting of the OU Sooners flag uh, in the horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. So Nick Bosa got back at him a little bit there. But uh, Cleveland's going to have issues at times moving forward. they got a real tough schedule coming up. We said before the season began, we thought they were one season away. Sure looks to be the case. They'll have their spots like they did last week uh, when they put up big numbers in last week's game against Baltimore, but they're also going to have growing pains along the way. That's what we saw on Monday. Let's jump into all the recap for week five. We'll try to get through these uh, as fast as we can. Again, they're in no particular order, just as I jot down notes on each and every game. Cardinals beat the Bengals, as you know, 26 to 23. 27 combined fourth quarter points. If you had the under, kind of a tough beat there. Kyler Murray, 10 carries, 93 yards. He had big fourth quarter scrambles. Don't like the fact that he's running a little bit too much, but again, decent numbers, 20 for 32, 253 yards, no touchdowns, but no picks either. And you see Kyler Murray get strong.
stronger and stronger. Usually, as the game moves along, he seems to do better in the second half than he does the first half. But they finally ran the football to the Cardinals with David Johnson, which is something we've been talking about already. You've got to give him some carries. He had 17 for over 90 yards this past weekend. Uh, Gonzalez makes the last second field goal to give the Cardinals the win. They had 514 yards on 7.2 yards per play. Uh, they also had 266 yards rushing on 7 yards per carry. Bills over the Titans, 14-7. to Titans fourth quarter touchdown. Well, it was taken away. They get another touchdown on the next play. That was taken away. And guess what? He was past the line of scrimmage, talking about Marcus Mariota on that second touchdown that was called back in, over a, in a matter of two or three plays that would have given the Titans a 14-7 to lead at the time. Then they set up for a short field goal. It gets blocked. Uh, Bills Isaiah McKenzie took that shuttle pass after that and goes 50-plus yards inside the Titans 20. They scored not too long after that. Josh Allen, 23 for 32, 219, two touchdowns, one pick, one of his better games. Mariota, just another pedestrian performance. I know he's going up against a good defense, but he does this way too often so far in his career. We just nothing electrifying about him on a consistent ma uh, manner. Uh, the Bills now 4-1, by the way. Only loss came to New England in a game they probably should have won. Falcons go into Houston. The Falcons were a big Sharps play. It was public on the Texans, Sharps on the Falcons, and the public got the money with the Texans, 53 to 32. Guess what, it was an eight point game with about two minutes to go in the contest. And then all of a sudden the Texans score a couple of quick touchdowns and they win by 21. Deshaun Watson, 28 for 33, 426 through the air, five touchdowns, no picks. He finally got some time to throw. Love this kid when he gets time to throw. Uh, De DeAndre Hopkins did get his, but Will Fuller had 14 receptions Options, targeted 16 times, 217 yards, three touchdowns. Matty Ryan puts up big numbers again, but it just doesn't matter. They've got no ground game whatsoever at times, this Atlanta Falcons team. And this was a one-point game at the half, yet they couldn't run the football. Houston, they had a buck 66 on the ground at five yards per pop. They averaged almost nine yards per play. Hey, listen, you look at that Atlanta schedule coming up. They're at Arizona, home against the Rams, home against Seattle. Dan Quinn could be out of a gig uh, with the Atlanta Falcons within the next three to four weeks. Keep an eye on that. They better win some games. Jaguars going to Carolina. They lose to the Panthers 34-27. Carolina, by the way, they're now 17-6 and six against the spread off an outright win as a dog under Rivera. Three straight wins now for Carolina since uh, Cam Newton took his leave of absence with the injury. Kyle Allen, decent game for the most part because he didn't make any mistakes. 17 for 30, 181 yards, a touchdown, no picks. Game manager is what he was because it's the McCaffrey show in Carolina. 19 carries, 176 yards, two rushing touchdowns, one passing uh, touchdown on six receptions, 61 yards. I mean, just doing a great job right now, uh, McCaffrey. And their wide receiver, DJ Moore, a decent game. You had DJ Chark, you had DD Westbrook, 15 grabs, 246 yards combined. Chark, a couple of touchdowns. For that, by the way, for the Jaguars, running well, 108 yards on Sunday. But Gordon Minshew's three fumbles, too tough to overcome. Uh, the Buccaneers and the Saints, boy, on Sunday morning, early in the morning, you just saw ticket after ticket in Las Vegas coming in on the under. Uh, a lot of sharps were taking the over. The money was on the over, yet the tickets were coming in on the under. And when I talk about the money, I'm talking about globally, offshore, back east, that kind of stuff. Saints beat the Buccaneers 31 to 24. The game did go over the total. Bridgewater finally got to open things up. He's been a game manager. Sean Payton and company let him open things up this past weekend against Tampa. And he goes 26 for 34, 314 yards, four touchdowns, only one pick. Michael Thomas had a huge game. 11 grabs, 11 receptions, 182 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. New Orleans outgained Tampa Bay 457 to 252. They gained almost seven yards to play to about four and a half yards per play for Tampa Bay. Jameis Winston, not a good game, and uh, 15 for 27, 204, two touchdowns, no picks, but he was under pressure all game long. Winston got sacked six times in that contest. Patriots knock off the skins, 33 to seven. Another slow start for the Patriots in that offensive line, but then they come on over the final two and a half quarters, and they're able to move away from the skins, get the win. Of course, if you haven't heard by now, the skins did fire uh, head coach Jay Gruden, but the Pats offensive line starts slow, it seems like, every week. They make adjustments. They go on to pile up 442 yards to 220 for the Skins. The Skins had just over 40 yards per play and 11 first downs in the game. Uh, not good, obviously. Colt McCoy just 18 for 27, 119 yards.
yards and a pick. Brady, 28 for 42, 348, three touchdowns, one pick. Sony Michelle, good game run of the football. Edelman, Gordon, and White, they all did well as far as receiving was concerned. Eagles knock off the Jets, 31 to six. The Jets finished the game with nine total first downs, 128 total yards on 2.3 yards per play. Uh, Luke Falk was sacked 10 times by this Philly defense. Carson Wentz, 17 for 29, 189 through the year. Didn't have to do a lot, and they didn't do a lot, that offense for Philly. They gained just 4.5 yards per play, and they didn't run well at all. Uh, by the way, 14 of Philly's 31 points came from the defense. They are now on a 19 and nine under run at home are the Philadelphia Eagles. We talked about this, and this was one of our plays this past weekend. The Denver Broncos, not as bad as their record indicated at 0-4. They had lost two games on last second field goals. They come through as an underdog and knock off the Chargers on the road, 20-13. to uh, Flacco was hitting his receivers on the move a couple of times in this game, something we haven't seen a lot the first few games. Chargers, two turnovers inside uh, the Denver five-yard line. They had that fumble at the end of the first half by Eckler as he's trying to stretch it in uh, for a touchdown, <clears throat> excuse me, attempting to convert a fourth down rather than kicking the field goal at that point to end the half. And then, of course, they had another uh, interception inside the 10-yard line. So the big two turnovers inside the Denver 10 really, really did cost the Chargers in this one. Chargers were a Joes, a public play. The pros were on the Denver Broncos. Denver, a buck 90 on the ground, six yards per carry. Lindsey and Freeman combined for 28 carries. Uh, Rivers, 32 for 48, 211 yards. He had two picks and no touchdowns. And uh, boy, this Chargers team just always seems to disappoint. For me, though, and for those who jumped on board with me, uh, they did not disappoint. We thought they'd lose the game, and they did. Uh, overtime, Ravens beat the Steelers 26-23. to I want to say something real quick about this. This past week, if you bet on the Baltimore Ravens and you laid more than three, or you bet on Pittsburgh and you took less than three and a half, you got to find more outs or maybe think twice about betting games because there's no way you should have laid more than three with Baltimore with all the books that had three especially Sunday. All the books had three for the most part. And as far as Pittsburgh's concerned, you have to take three and a half because there were enough out there, less than half the books after Thursday. But, but again, you could have found three and a half with Pittsburgh. So uh, just a little heads up there about shopping. Just make sure to shop. Uh, Ravens did average less than four yards per play. Lamar Jackson ran the ball too much again, 14 times. Three picks. He again, uh, with Lamar Jackson, it was a situation where he reverted back to last year's Lamar Jackson. You just, it's tough to watch sometimes because you see this guy go out there one week or for two weeks early in the season and actually play well. And then the last couple of weeks, he's reverted back to the uh, 2018 version of Lamar Jackson. Devlin Hodges came in and was decent in replacing uh, Mason Rudolph after he suffered what looked to be a concussion. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the coaches like Hodges quite a bit for the future. Pitt, one and four straight up on the season, second time and only, or only the second time in 31 seasons, but second time in, well, since 2013 that Mike Tomlin's teams have started one and four. Heading over to London, England, the Raiders knock off the Bears 24 to 21. The Raiders led 17 nothing at the half. They trailed 21 17 going into the fourth quarter. Uh, the defense allowed Chicago and Chase Daniel just four and a half yards per play like the fact that uh, they ran for 169 yards on 4.3 yards per carry to the Raiders holding Chicago to 2.5 yards per carry they got to Daniel and sacked him four times Carr by the way never did see the turf he was his jersey was kept clean he goes 25 for 32 229 no touchdowns but no picks Josh Jacobs again man this young running back for the Raiders 123 yards on 26 carries by the way 70 percent of the tickets and the money were on the Chicago Chicago Bears, Oakland, and John Gruden off to a 3-2 and two start. Vikings were a play for us over the weekend. We cashed that one, a 28-10 win over the Giants. Uh, Public and Chops were both on Minnesota by kickoff. You had Cousins completing seven passes uh, for 130 yards and a couple of touchdowns to Adam Thielen, I guess. Now, squeaky wheel gets the grease, as they say. Thielen complaining last week. He got passes his way this time and had two touchdown passes to go along with it. Cousins went 22 for 27, two touchdowns, no picks. Dalvin Cook, a big 
big game on the ground. Daniel Jones sacked four times. Vikings outgained the Giants 490 to 211, 7.7 to 3.4 yards per play. They ran for 211 yards on over six yards per carry. Packers over the Cowboys 34 to 24. Boy, those first two starts of the season are, are in the distance right now for Dak Prescott in getting farther away. 17-0 uh, Green Bay at the half. Dak Prescott had a horrible first half. He ended up going 27 for 44. He had two touchdowns, but three interceptions. He made bad plays in big key situations. Let's just say that. Dallas did run for about 5.8 yards per carry and over 120 yards rushing. So Green Bay still having their problems against the run, but their offensive line got an A-plus grade from me on Sunday. Uh, also, Dallas, besides the fact that Prescott struggled so badly in the first half, 11 penalties, 124 yards. Mari Cooper had a huge game. He had 11 grabs, 226 yards, and a touchdown. Gallup had a big game also. Aaron Rodgers, by the way, didn't have to do a lot. No touchdowns, but no picks. Aaron Jones, 107 yards on the ground. Not bad at all. Dallas had 32 first downs. They outgained Green Bay by 230 yards, and they gained 8.3 yards per play, but all those penalties and the three interceptions thrown did them in on Sunday. Colts knock off the Chiefs Sunday night football, 19-13. Frank Reich, man, coaching of the week goes to Frank Reich, designed the perfect game plan to take advantage of KC's weaknesses on defense. They ran the ball right at him. It allowed, uh, it allowed uh, Jacoby Brissett to game manage, not have to create a lot on his own at quarterback. Here's something to note. KC's not running the football. They don't have Hunt anymore. Remember that last year and they don't have a running game 36 yards on 14 carries against the Colts and they are able because they're not able to run the football defenses are able to kind of keep Patrick Mahomes in the pocket for the most part and in his last two games against the Lions and the Colts Mahomes is just 46 for 81 one touchdown less than 57 percent completion rate against Detroit and against Indianapolis we'll see if that continues uh, from KC opposing defenses Marlon Mack was nasty. 29 carries, 132 yards. Uh, the Colts ran the ball 45 times, only threw the ball 29 times. Perfect coaching, again, by Frank Reich. And the Colts players deserve credit for carrying out that coaching. By the way, the Colts are on a 10-1 and under run against teams with a winning record. There's your recap for Week 5 in the NFL. We do them every Tuesday, so we get a little bit long on these Tuesday videos. But uh, we've heard it from a lot of you, and you like these recaps. I know it helps me in my handicapping. Hopefully it will in yours also. Real quick again before we get to the free pick, uh, we do have WNBA going on Tuesday. It'll be available at 1 p.m. Eastern. It is game four now of the WNBA Finals, and uh, we're on a 45-25-2 and two run of the WNBA. NHL, we have a premium pick for Tuesday. It'll be available Tuesday morning, DocSports.com. 5-1 and one this season so far in the NHL, 27-12 and 12 October-November run going back to the start of last season. Baseball playoffs, 5-2 and two so far. 32 to a 19 run with all sports combined going back about 17 days up about 43 units uh, with those plays during this run. All right, let's get to our free pick, and this will be in a, a recommendation in the NHL uh, for Tuesday. We're going to back the underdog Winnipeg Jets. Right now, as I cut this video, they're around plus $1.30. They're at Pittsburgh. And listen, Pittsburgh's got a couple of elite players. We already know that. They can be fantastic sometimes talking about Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, but Malkin's banged up. He's out indefinitely with a lower body injury. He got hurt a couple of the games ago, but their depth is a bit hamstrung for Pittsburgh, and they can be shaky at times on the defensive end. We know that. It is a playoff term long term. A playoff team in long term as far as my opinion is concerned, but I do expect a tough matchup tonight. Winnipeg's got some new faces. They do have some elite or a couple elite top line players. There's no doubt about it. Front end, back into the ice both. They've got a couple of elite front line players. They're off to a one and two start. Not a great start. Uh, they're going to battle for a playoff spot again at the end of the year. They had a lot of bad luck. More than their share last season. So certainly did the Winnipeg Jets. I think they're catching the Pittsburgh Pen Penguins at the perfect time with Pittsburgh being a little bit banged up and we're going to recommend to play on Winnipeg. And again, you can get them right around plus $1.30 if you're watching this overnight into Tuesday morning. Winnipeg Jets, our free pick. Hey, listen, if you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. We do appreciate those of you who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Tuesday in the win column right back here Wednesday by 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific, another free pick and a much shorter video, I promise.